Hey guys, today I'm going to do a video about Charlie Plexing. So what is Charlie Plexing? Well, a while back I did a video about display multiplexing where I had eight output lines from a microcontroller, pretty simple microcontroller, and arranging them in an array such as this. I had five rows, three columns. I could control 15 LEDs so I can make an alphanumeric display. I won't get into much about that. You can watch that other video if you want to know more about that. But anyway, as you increase the number of rows and lines you can control quite a large number of display elements or most commonly LEDs. Well with eight output lines the most LEDs I can control in a standard grid matrix such as this, I'd go 4x4 four four, and that would allow me to control 16 LEDs. But that shape is not very good for generating alphanumeric characters. But anyway, there's something called Charlie Plexing. That allows you to control a great number of LEDs from a limited amount of output lines. For example, if I had eight output lines, I can control 56 LEDs. And the formula for that is the number of output lines you have squared minus the number of output lines. So if I had eight output lines, eight times eight is 64, you know that's eight squared, minus eight leaves me with 56. So that's how you figure that. However, Charlie Plexing comes at a cost. The wiring is much more complicated and you need something called tri-state logic. So what is tri-state logic? Well, for an example here, let's say we have several devices connected to a data bus that's communi communicating with a device over here. Now, this can be 8 bits, 16 bits, but for simplicity I'm just showing one line. Now, let's say this device is trying to put out a 1 or a high voltage. That could be 5 volts, for example. And these devices, you know, they, their output could be either 0 or 1. And if this is 0, this is, you know, these other ones could be zeros, for example. This is kind of being short-circuited by uh, these devices syncing that output. You know, it's trying to pull it down to zero level. And the data will not make it here. So what they have is called tri-state logic. So the output can be either zero, one, or what's known as high impedance or disabled. So when the device does not need to be connected to the bus, it goes into a high Z state or high impedance state. Effectively disconnected from the bus, so this device here that needs to talk to the peripheral or whatever it is, you know, is not impeded in any way by these other devices. In its simplest form, Charlie Plexing does not need a tri-state bus. It'll work with just a, a push-pull type output that can source or sync current. And that just be controlling two devices. For example, let's say you want to turn this LED on here. You make this output one, this one zero. The current would flow this way. Of course, this LED being reverse bias would not turn on. But if you wanted to turn that LED on, you just put a 1 here, 0 here, and now current flows through the LED. Of course, I'm using conventional current flow in this demonstration. So that LED's on, this one's off. And with clever programming, you can do all kinds of things. You can you know, have them flip-flopping very fast to make them look like they're both on. And then you can do fading tricks and, you know, fade from one LED to the other. 
by using uh, you know, a simple form of Charlie plexing. And I've actually seen cheap battery operated Christmas lights that flip back and forth but only use two output lines. Normally you'd have two output lines in ground without Charlie plexing. But with the cheap Chinese LEDs, they want to keep things as cheap as possible, and they just have two wires and connect several, you know, LEDs in parallel on each side, and they can do, you know, fancy strobing and fading effects with two channels like that. In this example, we have three outputs controlling six LEDs. So 3 squared minus 3 is 6. So you can see the formula working there. And like this example, let's say we want to turn these two LEDs on and off here. Well, in the first case, we can have this node high, node 2 low, and current will flow and turn this upper LED on. If we reversed it and made this high and this one low, current will flow this way. However, there's a problem. If this is not a tri-state type output, current could flow down this way depending whether it's high or low. So if, if this node is high and this is low, and this was low to turn this one on, well, some current's going to go this way as well. So, that's where setting this to the high impedance or disabled state doesn't let any current flow. Well, you might think, well, can't current flow around this way? The voltage drop with two LEDs in series would be too much if you're using the three volt LEDs. Plus, in my case, I don't have any dropping resistors because the output of this microcontroller is limited and you don't have to use um, the dropping resistors. So this LED is pretty much going to keep the output to 3.2 volts or whatever. And in that case, these LEDs will never turn on. Now let's take a look at an actual circuit. I have this pickaxe chip. It's just an 8 pin dual inline package. And I have these three red wires connected to this group of six LEDs. The white wire here just ties one end back to the other to make that triangular shaped layout I was just showing earlier. This does have a fourth output and I added an LED to it to blink as well. That output I cannot make high impedance so it kind of separate on its own. So I'm actually controlling seven LEDs with this microcontroller. Now you might say, well, I can use a, a shift register and things like that. But we just want to keep things simple using Charlie plexing here. Okay, let's fire it up. And, well, put this filter in front so maybe you can see it better you can see I'm individually addressing each of those LEDs and of course the seventh one this is really not part of the Charlie Plex now the program I wrote if I put this one input to low or ground it makes all of the LEDs turn on at once. It's actually just going real fast through that and to your eyes it looks like they're all on. If I take that back off it goes back to the uh, individual um, display of each LED. That's pretty much how it works. You might be asking well, I don't remember a command to set the output to high impedance with these microcontrollers. But there is a way to do it. Most of them allow you to program the pin to be an output or an input on the fly. And that's what I'm doing 
When I need a high impedance state, I just set the pin to be an input. And since the program doesn't address the pin in any way, when it is an input, it doesn't really affect anything. So in a nutshell, that's pretty much how it works. So would I use Charlie Plexing in practice? Well, definitely with a small microcontroller like this, it doesn't have a lot of outputs. If I were developing a product, you know, cost is king, you want to minimize the cost, just like those cheap Chinese Christmas lights I mentioned earlier. You know, they sell those things for a couple bucks or whatever, got to keep the price down. But as you get more outputs, it becomes uh, much more of a challenge to use Charlie Plexing as opposed to a standard matrix type uh, multiplexing situation. Well, that's about it. Thanks for watching.